Hello folks, I'm Abfielder. Welcome to my top 10 client side mods for Minecraft. These are mods that make survival Minecraft a little bit easier and can be used on vanilla servers. They're all fabric mods. So if you need a tutorial for installing fabric and fabric mods, then I've got you covered. Link will be in the top right hand corner right now. It'll also be down in the description below along with links to all the mods showcased in today's video. This top 10, it's not in any particular order, although I have saved my favorite till last. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like it. Also, I've got tutorials on many of the mods in this top 10. Don't forget to check those out. Don't worry, I'll remind you as we go through the list. That's enough of an intro. Let's jump into the first mod. So number one then is the item scroller mod. If I show it in mod menu, which is one of the ones I'll show you later, item scroller used for inventory management, faster crafting and faster villager trading. So let me show you some inventory management. So one click to bring all those random items across, one click to take all those random items up, and then just one click to bring items of the same type across, so sugarcane. Crafting, watch me craft all this sugarcane into paper with one click. Perfect. If that's not convincing enough, then let's convert this into flight duration free rockets. So I change the recipe. I press the C key, which is what I've got it set to. And boom, I've just crafted up an entire shulker of rockets. Imagine how much time that has saved. So it also helps with villager trading. And to demonstrate this, I'm at my villager trading hall. I stream from here. Hit that subscribe button right on YouTube. So I have global favorites. I have terracotta set as my global favorites. I just hit the T key when I go into the villager and it just trades until it's locked out. Click on him, hit the T key. Click on him, hit that T key. Hit on him, click that T key. Look how quick it is to trade on repetitive items. Folks, there's loads more to this mod. I've done a tutorial on it. Link will be in the top right hand corner right now. Check it out. Let's move on to mod number two. Mod number two is mini hood. There are three things I'm going to quickly show you in mini hood, but I've also got some tutorials that goes into much more depth because there's so much to cover on this. Up in the top left hand corner, you see that clean F3 debug type menu I've got up there. Got like my coordinates and my frames per second, things like that. That's mini hood and it's configurable. There's loads more options you can choose from. On the pyramid, you can see some numbers. That's the light levels. So the ones in red are where mobs can spawn. And then lastly, you can see like this red semi sort of transparent circle in front of me. That's actually a despawn sphere. So if I was creating a perimeter, I can make sure I've got that right. You can also do circles. So if you're building circle type objects, absolutely amazing. Again, I've covered all that in video. So mod number two, folks, mini herd, it's amazing. Mod number three then is the replay mod. This gives me another excuse to show off the villager trading hall. Now, have you ever seen videos like this one where you see these lovely cinematic camera movements as it just swooshes around the building? And also if you watch the hermits and they do time lapses, they're all using replay mod. It just records your gameplay as you're doing it and then you can do the, the video afterwards. It is so, so powerful. I mean, I don't play with shaders, so this was recorded while I was in game. And then after to do the video, I added shaders. You can do that. You can change your resource pack. It's amazing. Number three then, folks, replay mod. Not a lot I can show you with this one then, folks, but number four is Sodium. Sodium is a mod that helps out with your frames per second, really improves the frames per second, as well as removing those kind of lag spikes you get, those frame rate spikes you sometimes get. Think of it as a little bit like Optifine, but it is so, so good. I highly recommend you get it. It makes the experience a lot smoother. Number five then is Tweakaroo, and this is a absolutely massive mod. I have already done 35 videos on the various tweaks in this mod. Check out the playlist, link will be in the top right hand corner, but I wanna give you a little quick demonstration of what this mod can do, because it's just so, so handy. So the tweak I am currently demonstrating is Freecam. Freecam allows you to fly around almost like you're in spectator mode. Now it is limited to the chunks that you have loaded, and also, just remember your body's still up where you left it. I have forgot and have been killed in the past. It has something called fast block placement. So I can limit this to the layer. Just hold down right click and it just quickly places those blocks. Also in there, you may have noticed I only initially had seven green terracotta in my hand. I left the rest in my inventory. Restocked my hand as I ran out. We can also do something called random block placement and combine it with that previous tweet, that fast block placement. So if I put in green, brown, I think that is, and yellow terracotta, and then 
We'll set this to free random and it helps if I turn it on. There we go. Look how quick that is. So if you have random textures, really, really good. Like I say, it is huge and there is so much to cover. Check out the playlist. Let's move on to mod number six. Number six then is mod menu. It gives you this little mods button here. When you've got 10 mods, it becomes increasingly difficult to remember how to access and configure them. If you click on one that has a config option like tweak a roof, for example, it gives you the config option in the top right hand corner there. You can just click on it and it'll open the menu. It means you haven't got to remember shortcuts for 10 different mods. Very, very useful. Mod number seven then is Bedrock Miner. So I have a Haste 2 beacon. I've got these items in my hotbar. Right, I just right click on a bit of Bedrock, then I left click and boom, Bedrock gone. Just keep left clicking. And there you go, you see it places those items, then it essentially insta mines them and it gets rid of the Bedrock. It's so, so quick to get rid of large pieces of Bedrock. It's It feels a little bit cheaty. In fact, the mod author suggests you should probably just speak to your server admins before you use this, make sure they're happy with it. But it does work on vanilla. We have used it on StrangeCraft. As you can see, it's just so, so quick and so powerful. So that's Bedrock Miner. Number eight then is World Edit. Now, I use this in Creative. I don't use it a huge amount, but it is a very, very powerful mod. You see some absolutely amazing landscapes that people have done in Creative mode that just look superb. And they tend to use something like World Edit to do that. I sometimes use it to create perimeters in Creative if I want to test a farm design. That's also a very good use for it. Check it out. Super good mod and so many good tutorials on YouTube for it. Number nine then is voxel maps and it's that little mini map in the top right hand corner. Lots of options to customize it. You can also set waypoints with this so it's easier to find the locations in your world. I'm in the Strangecraft world. I'm at my Wild West town. Well, mining catch is Wild West town. May have mentioned I stream here from Monday nights. Hit that subscribe button, come check it out. But this just makes it easier to find your way around. And as well, if you hit the M key, you also get this live mini map as well. Super useful. We're finally there then folks, number 10, and as promised, I've saved my favorite till last, it's Lightmatica. Lightmatica is a schematic mod, and if like me, you're not the best builder in the world, then I like to build in creative mode where I've got all the blocks to hand, it's easier to test out new ideas, knock them down if you don't like them, and then once I'm happy, I like to transfer those ideas into my survival world. Now in days gone by, I'd have used a picture or a second instance of Minecraft so I could just copy it. This is so much simpler. I can just load, I can take a schematic, load it into my survival world and then just place it in block by block and it'll tell me if I've made any errors as I'm building it. Even has something called easy place that makes it so much simpler to place the blocks as long as they're in your inventory. So if you're also doing something like a complex farm from one of your favorite content creators, it makes those much easier. Now they don't always put them in their videos, but I have a website at fielder.com where I have over 100 Lightmatic files, including farms from your favorite content creators. So check that out. If you're in creative mode, you can paste them into your creative world and test the farm, see how well they work. Honestly, there are so many features in this mod. I've done several videos on Lightmatica. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner and down in the description below, obviously. Folks, those are 10 of my favorite Minecraft client mods. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click that like button. It'll help other people see it, boost it up in the ratings, and I'd really appreciate that. Also, as I've mentioned, I do lots and lots of tutorials on these sort of things. So if you like that sort of thing and you want to see more of it, hit that subscribe button. And I also stream, as I've mentioned a few times, right here from the Strangecraft world on Monday evenings right here on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button. Anyway, folks, I'm Abfielder. That's all I have time for. Goodbye.